Chapter 9 A Day Off Usually, Tommy enjoyed his days off from work. Although he tried to take as many hours as he could, there were still times when he had a day or two off. In the past, he, Tubbo, and Ronbu would try to coordinate the days they had off so they could all spend time together. These days off were special for the trio, almost always spent curled up on their couch in a pile of blankets and pillows, snacking on whatever food they had in the apartment, while re-watching their favorite movies together. Today wasn't like that, though. It had only been a few days since their argument. The air in the apartment had been nearly suffocating with tension as Tubbo gave Tommy the cold shoulder, with Ronbu awkwardly trying to act as a mediator between them. Tubbo had made it clear he wasn't going to stop with the pissy attitude until Tommy came clean with his secrets, while at the same time Tommy refused to say anything unless Tubbo and Ronbu opened up about their own shit first. So basically, they were at a stalemate. Tubbo was sitting at his computer, working on some more coding assignments, although he technically had the day off. Ronbu was curled up in the far corner of the couch, headphones over his ears, as he tried to put all of his focus on his DS. And Tommy was trying to watch a documentary on sharks to take his mind off things, but it wasn't working very well. Tommy was bothered by two major things right now. One was obviously the fight he was having with his roommates, but the other was the knowledge that at the end of the week he was going to go meet with the syndicate for the first time. The idea of going to the supervillain meeting loomed over him, his anxieties popping up in the back of his mind to remind him of everything that could go wrong. Siren said he would protect him, but how far would he go? Were the villains going to be grateful for his help, or were they going to demand more than he could give? There were a lot of ways the meeting could go wrong, but Tommy also couldn't forget the fear in Arson's voice. If Tommy hadn't been there, Iceman would have died. That was going to happen to more villains, because the heroes lied to the public to make themselves look better. Going to the syndicate meeting was like walking into a lion's den, but Tommy knew he had to do it. If another villain died when he could have helped them, he would never be able to bury the guilt. So, yeah, suffice to say, he was stressed out of his mind. Sitting in the apartment, Struggling not to think of the syndicate meeting, while his roommates gave him the cold shoulder, was practically torture for his nerves. He needed to get out of there, do something to distract himself. Well, he hadn't talked to Wilbur in a few days now, had he? Wilbur had given Tommy his number a little while ago, but he hadn't had a reason to call on him before. Although they had only hung out on the days Wilbur came into the cafe, Wilbur had said he and Tommy were friends so it wasn't too weird for Tommy to want to hang out with him on his day off, right? Hopefully not. If Wilbur wasn't available or didn't want to see him today, Tommy was probably just going to wander around the city anyway, just to escape Tubbo's icy glances. Picking up his phone, he typed in Wilbur's contact and pressed the call button, not bothering to move to another room as the phone rang in his ear. One ring. Two rings. Then. Hello? Hello? Hey, Will. Tommy greeted, ignoring the surprised glances from Tubbo and Ronbu since they hadn't noticed him making a call. Are you, uh, busy today? Uh, not particularly. I was actually going to stop by the cafe to see you today since it's been a while, if that's all right. Tommy smiled a bit, knowing Wilbur had been wanting to hang out with him too. Actually, big man, I'm not working today, but I was wondering if you would still want to hang out. He winced when his voice cracked a bit at the end. Thankfully, Wilbur's response was instantaneous. Oh, sure. What did you want to do? I don't know, I just need to get out of my apartment for a bit, Tommy told him, meeting Tubbo's cold glare without flinching. Well, if you wanted, you could come over to my place and we could watch a movie or something. Techno is making his signature baked potatoes tonight, and they're ridiculously good. Going to Wilbur's house? That wasn't something Tommy had expected, but if it got him out of his own apartment, he'd take it. Yeah, that sounds great. How should I get there? Tech and I can come pick you up at your place. We can be there in about 15 minutes if you want. Tommy smiled at the relief that washed over him. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Just text me when you're outside. Will do. See you soon, Toms. 
See you soon. As soon as Tommy hung up and shoved his phone in his pocket, Tubbo's voice rang out over the living room. Who was that? he asked, having spun around in his spinning chair to face Tommy. Wilbur. He's a friend of mine from work. Tommy shrugged, now carefully avoiding Tubbo's gaze. How come you haven't told us about him till now? Rambu asked, sounding at least a bit less suspicious than Tubbo. I've mentioned him, just not by name. Remember when I brought those muffins home a little while back and said my friend took me out to dinner? That was Will. And he's coming to pick you up? Tubbo questioned. Oh, uh, yeah? He and his brother are going to be here soon. This was the most he'd spoken to Tubbo in several days, and he wasn't really appreciating how it felt like he was about to be scolded by a parent. Are you sure you trust him? Tubbo pushed. Tommy narrowed his eyes. What the fuck? Of course I do. We've been friends for months now. I just think it's a little strange how you've never mentioned Wilbur to us before now. Tubbo snapped, folding his arms over his chest. Oh, so he wanted to bring this up again. All right, we're not getting into this fucking argument again. Tommy grumbled, standing up from the couch and grabbing his backpack off the floor. Sorry, I have a life outside of you, Tubbo, but I don't have to get your permission to hang out with a fucking friend of mine. You're not my goddamn parent, so stop acting like one. Well, maybe I wouldn't have to act, Tubbo. Rambu's shout made both Tommy and Tubbo jump, and Tommy quickly realized that that was the first time in a long time he'd heard Rambu actually sound angry. He was full-on glaring at Tubbo, and Tubbo immediately shrank back in his seat. If Tommy wants to go hang out with a friend of his, we don't need to interrogate him about it. So stop being so rude and just let him go. Tommy blinked, while Tubbo stared at Ron Boo in blatant shock. Although Ron Boo hadn't cursed or screamed or any of the other things most people did when they were angry, Ron Boo calling someone out was a very rare occurrence. Thanks, Ron Boo, Tommy said quietly, offering his friend a small smile. Just text us if you need anything. Ronbu told him. Nodding, Tommy waved at Ronbu as he headed for the door. Tubbo had turned back around to focus on his computer, and Tommy waited for him to glance back to wave goodbye. But he didn't. And after a beat of waiting, Tommy gave up and slammed the door shut behind him. Tommy stepped outside the apartment building and into the afternoon sun, taking a deep breath of the fresh air after having been stuck in his apartment all day. The sky was blue, but there was a swell of white clouds on the horizon. Tommy wasn't sure if it was supposed to rain, but at least he didn't have work tonight, and wouldn't have to get soaked walking home. It wasn't long before a sleek silver car drove up in front of the building. A car as expensive as that wasn't a common sight in Eastside, and Tommy instantly straightened up at the sight of it. The door to the passenger seat swung open, and Wilbur's smiling face popped out. Hey, Tommy, he said climbing out of the car and shutting the door behind him. You ready to go? Shit. Just hearing someone greet him with that much joy in their voice after days of Tubbo's coldness and Rambu's silence was enough to make him grin like an idiot. He rushed over to Wilbur, almost reaching out to hug him, but stopped himself at the last minute. Wilbur seemed to notice Tommy's hesitation, though, because he ended up throwing an arm over Tommy's shoulder to give him sort of a side hug. I'm glad you asked to come over today. I would have been bummed out if I'd gone to the cafe and you weren't there, Wilbur said, guiding Tommy to the back seat of the car. Thanks for having me. I'd have gone crazy if I had to spend the entire day in my apartment, Tommy told him, sliding into the back seat with Wilbur following right behind. The inside of the car was just as luxurious as he would have guessed. The seats were soft, cream-colored leather, and everything seemed perfectly clean. It was nothing like Foolish's car, which she'd only been in twice, with loose papers shoved under the seats and random shit piled in the back. As he clicked his seatbelt on, he heard a monotone voice come from up front. Nice to see you again, Tommy. Technoblade drawled. Oh yeah. Wilbur had mentioned that he couldn't drive, so he just made his brother drive him everywhere. Sup, Techno? Tommy greeted. Thanks for, um, coming to pick me up. Techno snorted. Wilbur would have bit my head off if I didn't. Wilbur, 
who had just buckled himself in next to Tommy and was already leaning across the middle seat towards him, paused and frowned. Don't say it like that, Techno. What, you don't want the kid to know how whiny you are? Techno asked, raising an eyebrow. Wilbur scowled. I'm not whiny, shut up. You are extremely whiny, Techno shot back. It's like dealing with an overgrown toddler. I'd believe it, Tommy chimed in, shooting Wilbur a shit-eating grin. You are a bitch after all. Hey! Before Tommy could react, Wilbur lunged at him, pulling him as far out of his seat as he could with Tommy's seatbelt in the way, and wrapped his arm around Tommy's head in a headlock. Hey now, no wrestling in my car, Techno protested. Tommy was yelling, struggling to pull Wilbur's arms off of him while Wilbur just laughed. Take it back. Say I'm not a whiny bitch, Wilbur told him, readjusting his grip to make sure he wasn't accidentally choking Tommy. Tommy glanced up at Wilbur through the hair that had fallen in his eyes and saw mischief glittering behind his glasses. You are not a whiny bitch, Tommy finally said. Wilbur smiled and relaxed his grip, and Tommy squirmed out of his arms and back into his own seat. As soon as he was free, though, he grinned at Wilbur again and opened his mouth. You are a stupid, dumb shithead with the temper of a toddler, and you're also still pretentious as fuck. Wilbur's eyes widened. You little... Tommy yelped as Wilbur grabbed him again, reaching out to try and smack his friend as he twisted to avoid another headlock. Wilbur tried to grip his wrists, but Tommy slapped his hands away, shrieking like a demon as he got himself tangled up in his own seatbelt. If you two don't stop roughhousing back there, I'm going to pull this car over. Techno called from the front seat. Do it, pussy! Tommy challenged. Sighing, Techno turned his right blinker on and began to turn to park on the street. Shit, no, wait, I was kidding! Tommy then yelled. Techno will be good, Wilbur added, quickly moving back into his own seat and folding his hands in his lap. Techno glanced at the two of them in the rearview mirror and shook his head as he turned his blinker off and pulled back onto the road. Tommy breathed a sigh of relief, falling back into his seat before squirming to try and get his seatbelt untwisted. It's his fault, Wilbur muttered after a few minutes of silence. It's not my fault, it's your fault, Tommy snapped back. Will, stop trying to blame the gremlin, Techno deadpanned. Huffing, Wilbur folded his arms and slumped back against his seat. He shot a half-hearted glare at Tommy, which Tommy responded to by sticking his tongue out at the man. When Wilbur flipped him off, he giggled, and Wilbur's frown quickly grew into a smile. Man, he'd missed hanging out with Wilbur. It hadn't even been a full week since they'd seen each other, but so much shit had happened since then that it felt like it had been eons. At least right now, he didn't have to worry about suspicious glares from roommates or surprise texts from villains. Well, technically he did still need to worry about getting a text from a villain, but it was the middle of the day and villains almost exclusively went out at night, so he was pretty much safe for the time being. Soon, the car started to slow down, and Tommy realized they were in a very nice neighborhood. Brownstones with arched windows lined the streets, with carefully attended to trees settled every few squares on the sidewalk. This wasn't West End. West End was the part of the city where the mansions were, but these places were still nearly as expensive. This was the nicest part of South Bay, the place where everyone who wasn't rich enough to live in West End, but higher class than the rest of the city, went to live. Shit. He knew Wilbur's family had money, but he didn't realize they were this well off. The car came up to another brownstone, with this one having a garage under the main level. Techno pulled the car into the lower level garage, which Tommy noticed was almost completely empty, save for a water heater settled in the corner. The garage door squeaked as it shut behind them. Wilbur hopped out of the car first, gesturing for Tommy to follow, which he did as soon as he was able to force his seatbelt out of the lock. Yeah, he'd really messed up by letting it get so twisted. Techno opened a small door in the garage and held it open, letting Tommy and Wilbur inside first. The inside of the house was even nicer than what Tommy had expected. The garage door led right into a large kitchen that looked as if it came straight out of a magazine. Rich oak cabinets and shining granite countertops reminded Tommy of all the fancy-ass kitchens he'd seen in movies. They had an extremely expensive-looking espresso machine settled near one of the windows, 
along with a myriad of other stainless steel appliances. Past the kitchen was what looked like some kind of living room. The space was dominated by a plush, gray couch with a large window overlooking a small backyard. There was also a huge TV settled in front of the couch, along with a glass coffee table covered in expensive-looking and ultimately useless knickknacks. "'You didn't tell me you were a fucking rich bastard,' Tommy said, shooting a glare at Wilbur. "'We're not that rich,' Wilbur protested. Tommy raised an unimpressed eyebrow. "'You're telling me this isn't rich?' he asked, gesturing to the kitchen and living room. "'Well, he's got a point,' Techno said, scooting past Wilbur and making his way into the living room. "'Okay, true, but it's not like we live in West End,' Wilbur argued. "'Yeah, but you're pretty damn close to it,' Tommy told him. "'Now it makes sense why you'd always tip me so much. It's not like it did any damage to your wallet.' Wilbur huffed and rolled his eyes, but didn't argue further with Tommy's point. "'Do you want to come see my room?' he asked instead. "'Yeah, sure,' Tommy shrugged. "'Lead the way, rich bitch.' Scoffing at the nickname, Wilbur led Tommy through the kitchen and living room, passing Techno, who was now settled on the couch with a book in his hands. Outside the living room, there was what Tommy guessed was the foyer, a narrow space near the front door, with a tall staircase leading up. It turns out, this place had more than two stories. In fact, it had four stories, with a bedroom and study on each floor, as a result of the building itself being so narrow. As they climbed up the steps... Wilbur explained to Tommy that the second floor was Techno's, the third floor was Wilbur's, and the fourth floor was Phil's. Tommy thought that even if each floor was mostly only made up of a small room or two and a narrow hallway, it was still dumb as fuck to have a floor for each person. Rich bastards. That's my study right there, although I never use it, so it's more of a guest bedroom at this point. Wilbur explained when they got to the third floor pointing to a closed door on the left-hand side of the staircase. On the right-hand side, there was another nondescript door, which Wilbur swung open with a grand swing of his arm. And this is my room, he announced proudly. The inside of Wilbur's room was pretty much just what Tommy expected. Expected as in, it was a mess. It wasn't too big, with a double bed pressed up against a window that overlooked the backyard. A desk shoved into the far corner, some clothes scattered around the floor, and random pieces of notebook paper strewn about on the bedsheets. There was also a guitar settled on the floor next to the bed, and a bunch of posters for different bands Tommy had never heard of taped to the walls. There were two weird parts to the room, though. One was a jar of sand that was settled on the corner of his desk, and the other was a picture of a salmon taped above his laptop. So, what do you think? Wilbur asked, giving Tommy an expectant look. It's messy, Tommy pointed out, narrowing his eyes at a sweatshirt on the floor. Also, why do you have a jar of sand? Wilbur shrugged. I like sand. Also, I promise it's usually not this messy. I just didn't expect anyone to come over today, so I didn't get a chance to clean up. What the fuck do you mean you like sand? Tommy questioned. I like sand. It's crunchy. Tommy's eyes widened. Please tell me you don't fucking eat sand. Wilbur ducked his eyes to the ground. There is nothing wrong with eating sand, technically speaking. Maybe Tubbo and Ronbu were right. Maybe he needed to be more careful about the people whose houses he went to. You're so fucking weird, Tommy muttered, shaking his head as he dropped his backpack on the floor. Glancing at the bed again, Tommy's gaze caught on one of the crumpled pieces of notebook paper that sat on top of the sheets. He picked it up and started to skim through the pencil scribble, only to have the paper torn out of his hand without warning. Don't go snooping, gremlin. Wilbur chastised, holding the paper close to his chest. Oh, come on, I was reading that! Tommy protested. What is it? Looks like poetry or something. Wilbur stared at him for a moment, the paper still half crumpled in his hand. After a few beats of silence, though, he unclenched his fist around the paper and smoothed it out to look down at it. It took Tommy a moment to realize that Wilbur was embarrassed by whatever he had been writing. Hey, look, if you don't want to share, that's fine, Tommy reassured him, 
I was just curious. But if it's personal shit, that's okay. No, it's okay, Wilbur said, running his finger along the edge of the page. It's just song lyrics I was trying to write. Tommy blinked. You write music? At some point, Wilbur had mentioned to Tommy that he played guitar, but Tommy didn't remember him mentioning that he wrote songs at all. I just mess around with stuff sometimes. Wilbur shrugged, staring at the paper for another beat before holding it out to Tommy. You can read them if you want. If you don't want me to, that's fine. I was just being a nosy shit, Tommy told him, shaking his head at the paper. Wilbur frowned, taking the paper back, and Tommy had another idea. Or, if you wanted, you could sing one of them for me. Wilbur's head whipped up in surprise. You... you'd want to hear my songs? The disbelief in Wilbur's tone almost made Tommy laugh. But he had a feeling it'd be taken the wrong way if he did that, so instead he just nodded eagerly. Yeah, of course. I haven't heard you play before, but I'm sure you'd fucking rock at it. There was a moment of silence as Wilbur considered Tommy's words. He seemed to be scrutinizing him, trying to determine if Tommy genuinely wanted to hear the songs or if he was just being polite. Tommy did actually want to hear Wilbur's music. If anything, it was because he was very curious as to what kind of music his friend would make. Okay, then, Wilbur finally said, sitting on the bed and picking his guitar up. I guess I can play you one. He patted the spot on the bed next to him, and Tommy settled himself down, bouncing his legs while he waited for Wilbur to check his guitar's tuning. Uh, I call this one Saline Solution. And then he started to play. One, two, three. While Tommy wouldn't say he was a connoisseur of good music or anything, he really liked Wilbur's style. He had a great voice, and his lyrics were very honest. But as the song went on, Tommy understood why Wilbur had been hesitant to let him read the lyrics at first. By the time he ended the song, Tommy was grinning widely at him. Holy shit, dude! That was amazing! Tommy exclaimed. Wilbur flushed at the praise. You really think so? Yeah, dude, 100%. That was fan-fucking-tastic! You could totally be a singer if you wanted. Thanks, Toms, Wilbur said with a smile as he set his guitar aside. I don't really have time to be a singer, but it's always been something I've liked to do in my free time. Only Phil, Techno, and my friend Nicky have heard me play, though. He paused. Well, now you as well, I guess. Well, thanks for letting me hear it. I'm going to have that song stuck in my head for ages now, Tommy joked. But uh, are you good? Like, that song was great, but also kind of... I'm fine, don't worry. Wilbur reassured him with a laugh. I wrote that song a few years ago when I was dealing with some shit, but it's all good now. Tommy breathed a sigh of relief at that, and was about to ask Wilbur more about the song when he spoke up again. But are you okay, though? Tommy froze, forgetting what he was going to say, and blinking at the man. Uh, I'm all right, why? You really wanted to get out of your apartment today and you've just seemed a bit more quiet than usual. Is everything all right? Wilbur asked, giving him a concerned look. Ah, shit. Tommy should have known this would come up. But hey, maybe he could talk about it with Wilbur. Not about any of the villain stuff, obviously, but about Tubbo and Ronbu. Maybe Wilbur would have advice for him. Or maybe it would just feel good to vent his frustrations. Um, well, my roommates and I got into a fight a few days ago. Tommy started, staring at his hands. What about? Wilbur's voice was soft, in the way that told Tommy he didn't have to go into detail if he didn't want to, and that Wilbur wasn't going to push him for anything more than he wanted to give. Just, um, complicated shit, Tommy muttered, picking at one of his nails. I just know they've been keeping some big secret from me, and they keep saying they'll tell me eventually, but they can't right now. But now both of them, well, really just Tubbo, is pissed at me because there's something going on I can't tell the two of them about either. Wait, so your roommates are mad that you're keeping a secret from them, while they're also keeping a secret from you? Tommy nodded. Isn't that a bit hypocritical? That's what I said! Groaning, Tommy dragged his hands down his face. 
It's so fucking annoying because Tobo doesn't even seem to realise what a hypocrite he's being with this. I think Rambu wants to tell me what their secret is, but Tobo won't let him. So now we're all just ignoring each other and it fucking sucks. Wilbur furrowed his brows. Have they given you a reason why they can't tell you their secret? Tubbo told me a while back that it was just something I didn't need to know. And the thing is, I was fine with that. I trusted that if they weren't telling me something, they had a good reason for it. But I just think it's a little unfair that they're not giving me the same kind of trust. He huffed, wrapping his arms around himself. Honestly? Yeah, that really sucks. It's unfair for Tubbo to expect you to tell him your shit when he's not doing the same for you. Wilbur told him. So are you just refusing to tell them your secret until they tell you theirs? Tommy sighed. No, I'm not that fucking petty. He huffed. I have a good reason for not telling them what's going on. If I did, they wouldn't understand and it wouldn't be good for anyone involved. It'd just fuck everything up and it would put them- Tommy cut himself off right before he could say it would put them in danger. It would um, just not be good. He stammered to correct himself. Tommy. Wilbur started, and his tone told Tommy he'd already fucked up. Were you going to say that it would be dangerous for your roommates to know about your secret? Shit. So far, Wilbur hadn't pushed him about his own secret, but that could change if he found out it was something not exactly safe. But of course, it's not like he could just tell him about the wild shitfest that his life had become for the same reasons that he couldn't tell Tubbo and Rondu about it. But Wilbur had heard his slip-up. He doubted the man would believe any lies he made up to try and explain it away. Tommy kept his eyes trained on his lap. Can I just tell you I can't answer that? He asked quietly, begging Wilbur to understand. Wilbur was quiet for a beat and Tommy felt his eyes boring into his skull. After a few tense moments, though, he sighed and snapped the taut wire of tension between them. Yeah, I won't push you if you really can't say anything, Wilbur said, although it was obvious he wasn't happy about it. Then, in a softer voice, he added, I just worry about you. It seems like this shit is weighing really heavily on you. Snorting, Tommy glanced up from his lap to meet Wilbur's concerned gaze. Do I really look that bad? You do. Wilbur answered with startling honesty. You look exhausted, Tommy. Tommy frowned. He hadn't healed anyone since Iceman, and his energy had completely returned since then. He was fine. He shouldn't look tired. Noticing his confusion, Wilbur spoke again. I don't mean in the physical way. I mean, like, emotionally. You just look so fucking drained. Oh, that made a bit more sense. Um, yeah, I guess you could say fighting with my roommates isn't something I'm used to, he muttered. You guys are really close, aren't you? Wilbur asked. Yeah. Tommy winced at how sad he sounded. They're pretty much the only thing I have. You might not have them forever. The unhelpful voice in his head reminded him. Wilbur took a moment to consider that, and then there was an arm slinging over his back, pulling him close to Wilbur's side. Instinctively, he rested his head on Wilbur's shoulder. You still have them, Wilbur said, as if he could read Tommy's thoughts. You're not going to lose them over something stupid like this. From what you told me, the three of you are a family. Family, the family you choose, stays together. One of Wilbur's hands came up to his hair, his fingers absently running through the curls. Even if you guys are fighting right now, though, you're still not alone. Do you know why? Why? Tommy's voice was muffled by Wilbur's sweater. Because you have me. The answer was simple. Short. Yet the four-word sentence still hit Tommy like a truck. What do you mean? Tommy stammered lifting his face from Wilbur's sweater as he struggled to understand what the man meant. Wilbur's smile was small, but genuine. I mean that I care about you, Tommy. You are one of my best friends, and I want to be there for you if you need anything. A lump formed in Tommy's throat at that, his mind repeating best friend over and over again. Tubbo and Ronbu were his best friends, 
but he was beginning to realize how Wilbur had clawed his way up to being one of the most important people in his life, right alongside the two of them. Yeah, Wilbur was his best friend. The thought made something warm blossom in Tommy's chest. Thank you, Tommy whispered, knowing he'd get choked up if he lingered too long on the realization. You're one of my best friends, too. Well, that's good, Wilbur snorted his tone returning to something teasing as he ruffled Tommy's hair and squeezed the arm around him. If I'm admitting that one of my best friends is a teenager, you'd better be willing to call me your best friend too. Tommy huffed out a laugh, pulling away from Wilbur's side. You're such a lame old man, Wilbur. Can't find any friends your own age, so you're out here hanging out with a seventeen-year-old. Oh, fuck off. You're way lamer than I am, Wilbur teased, lightly shoving Tommy away. Most kids your age are out doing rebellious stuff like partying, not hanging out with a bored 24-year-old. Parties are stupid, Tommy said, thinking back to the one party he'd been invited to before he'd graduated from school. The air had been thick with the smell of weed and liquor. The place was dark, the music they played there was shit, and they were only there for less than an hour before someone spilled beer on Ron Boo's shirt, making them decide to call it a night. You know, that's fair. They're not for everyone. Wilbur shrugged, leaning his hands behind him on the bed. I wasn't much of a party-goer myself when I was your age, either. Oh? Then what kind of stuff did you do back in the Stone Age? Tommy asked, smirking at Wilbur. Oh yes, the Stone Age. Wilbur rolled his eyes. I had fun in my own ways, but it's not the kind of stuff I could ever tell you. Tommy blinked. What does that mean? It means I can't tell you. Wilbur repeated his smirk now identical to Tommy's. But Wilbur... Tommy whined. You can't just say that and not expect me to be curious. Instead of acknowledging Tommy's pouting, Wilbur instead pushed to his feet and grabbed Tommy's wrist to drag him up from the bed as well. Come on, child, we're gonna go downstairs and watch a movie. You can't tell me even one little thing you did. Did you steal something? Or smoke cigarettes? Oh, did you smoke stolen cigarettes? Tommy rambled as they headed out of the room and down the stairs. Wilbur didn't respond to him, and by the time they got downstairs, Tommy was forced to admit defeat. They ended up watching some animated movie about a girl whose parents got turned into pigs, so she had to work at a magical bathhouse to save them. It was a bit weird to Tommy at first, but the animation was really nice, and the story was almost fairy tale esque in a way, and he ended up really enjoying it. At some point near the middle of the movie... Tommy had started to doze off. His head ended up on Wilbur's shoulder, and soon enough, Wilbur had an arm wrapped around his shoulder, allowing him to slip into the twilight between sleeping and wakefulness. He didn't fall asleep completely. Behind them in the kitchen, he could hear Techno clattering pots and pans as he shuffled around the kitchen, followed by the occasional beep of an oven or microwave. Tommy ended up waking up completely towards the end of the movie when Phil came in to join them. This is one of my favorite movies, Phil told Tommy when he noticed him sleepily blinking his eyes open. Tommy tried to sit up straighter to give Phil some room to sit on the couch with them, but Wilbur just tightened his arm around Tommy's shoulder, and Tommy huffed, but gave up trying to move away. Phil chuckled at the interaction between the two. Will you being clingy again? Phil's tone was light and airy with amusement. Shut up, Wilbur mumbled. And that was when Tommy realized that Wilbur's face was buried in his hair, and that he sounded even more tired than Tommy felt. Looks like you're being used as a pillow, Phil said, as if Tommy hadn't noticed. Yep, clingy bastard, Tommy grumbled, shifting under Wilbur's arm, but not trying to get out of the hold. You'll get used to it, Phil chuckled. I think Tech's almost done with dinner. I can bring your plates in here for you two, since Will looks like he'd fall asleep at the table if I made him get up. Tommy opened his mouth to insist that it was fine, that he could get up and get his food himself since they were already being kind enough to let him have some. But Wilbur slapped a hand over his mouth before he could. I know what you're going to say, and you don't need to be grateful for us feeding you. Wilbur slurred, his cheek still pressed against Tommy's head. Let Papa Bird bring us our baked potatoes. Papa Bird? Tommy questioned, frowning as Phil disappeared into the kitchen behind the couch. 
Yes, we are baby birds, and Phil is our papa bird, Wilbur said, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. If Tommy flushed a little at Wilbur saying our papa bird, no one saw it. A few minutes later, Phil walked back in while carrying two steaming plates with a baked potato on each of them. Dad, Mimi hungry. Wilbur whined as Phil set the two plates on the coffee table in front of them. Feed me, Papa. Your food is right here, baby bird, Phil told him with a wry grin. Unfortunately, you gotta actually get up and use a fork and knife to feed yourself. Tommy could feel Wilbur frown as he lifted a hand to flip off his father, which just made Phil chuckle. Tech and I are going to go eat in my office to talk over some work stuff. Sorry I can't chat longer, but it's nice seeing you again, Tommy. For as much as Tommy wanted to be wary of the older man still, it was nearly fucking impossible to keep his guard up around Phil's kind smile and easygoing laugh, especially when he was joking around with Wilbur and bringing him food. It was nice seeing you too, Phil, Tommy told him, and was surprised when he realized he actually meant it. Shooting the two of them one last grin, Phil waved as he left the room, disappearing around the corner in a flash of green. Tommy's stomach growled as soon as Phil was gone, and he ignored Wilbur's whines of protest as he threw the man's arm off of him so he could grab his plate. After a few beats, Wilbur did the same, although he shot Tommy a fake, dirty look at having been so rudely woken from his nap so they could both eat. While Tommy didn't know what the standards for baked potatoes were, he had to say this one looked pretty damn good. Steam was still curling from the cut in the center of the potato, revealing fluffy, white, potatoey goodness drenched in melted cheese, topped with green onions and some pepper. He and Wilbur were quiet as they ate their food and watched the rest of the movie. Tommy hadn't realized how hungry he was until he had the first bite of his dinner, but it was fucking good, and he ended up finishing it very quickly. By the time their plates were empty... The credits were rolling across the screen. Wilbur stood up with his dirty plate in hand, and Tommy followed, both of them moving slowly, with grogginess still weighing heavy on their limbs. The kitchen was empty. Wilbur turned on the sink to rinse his plate off, and then held a hand out for Tommy to hand him his own plate. So, Wilbur said, as he grabbed a sponge to wash off their forks. What did you think of the movie? Hopping up on the counter next to the sink... Tommy scratched his chin in thought. I liked it, he said. It's not something I normally watch on my own, but it kind of reminded me of a Disney movie, but like, different. And that's not just because it's animated. Wilbur nodded. No, I get what you mean. I was mostly curious what you thought of the ending. Well, what about it? Do you think she sees him again? Wilbur asked, moving the clean forks aside to sponge off the plates. Oh yeah, I definitely think so. Tommy nodded. They already met before when she was younger and fell into the river. After finding each other twice, I don't see how they wouldn't find each other a third time. Wilbur smiled. Do you think it's like fate? Or do you think she's going to seek him out intentionally? I'm not sure, but I don't think it really matters which one it is. I think it's more just one of those situations where you know there's someone that's going to be important to your life. And no matter what you do, you're going to find yourself running into them over and over again. I feel like that's what that type of movie is trying to tell you. Something all mystical and shit like that. Tommy explained, tapping his fingers against the granite counter. A bit like being trapped in their orbit. Wilbur hummed under his breath, almost too low for Tommy to hear it. Yeah, Tommy muttered. Like that. Before Wilbur could reply, he let out a sharp hiss of pain, and the knife he'd been washing clattered to the bottom of the sink. Immediately, he shut off the water and grabbed his hand, and Tommy noticed a bit of blood dripping into the metal basin. Shit. Wilbur cursed, keeping his hand over the sink. Caught myself with a stupid knife. Eyes widening, Tommy hopped down from the counter. Need help? Yeah, there's a first aid kit in the upper cabinet next to the fridge. Can you grab that real quick? Wilbur asked, wrapping his uninjured hand around his palm. Tommy headed over to the cabinet and found the first aid kit easily. He dropped the box next to the sink and opened it up, reaching for the large band-aids piled neatly in the back row, but hesitated before he could grab one. He and Wilbur hadn't talked about powers before. 
A large percentage of the population had them, but it was generally considered a bit rude to ask someone what their powers were. Usually, only people really close to someone knew about your powers, unless they were unable to be hidden in day-to-day -day life, or you had to use them to save someone from dying, like what happened with Tommy and a certain supervillain. Tommy had no idea if Wilbur had a power or not, and in turn, Wilbur had no idea about his healing powers either. While he hadn't exactly been planning on telling Wilbur about his powers, he found that he didn't actually mind the idea of him knowing about them. After today, Tommy wanted to trust Wilbur. Wanting to trust someone wasn't exactly something he was familiar with, and of course he couldn't trust Wilbur with everything. But he wanted to help Wilbur right now. Not to mention, the cut on his palm looked like it hurt. Actually, we don't need this, Tommy said, shoving the first aid kit aside. Tommy, what are you talking about? Wilbur asked, clutching his hand still. I'm bleeding, I need a band-aid. No, you don't, just give me a hand, Tommy said, holding his own hand out. Wilbur frowned at him for a moment, before his eyes widened. Tommy expected more arguing, more confused comments about what he planned on doing, but to his surprise, Wilbur just gave him his hand without question. The cut was relatively easy to heal. It was shallow, and the only side effect Tommy felt as the orange light faded away was the fact that he yawned as he pulled his own hands back to his sides. Wilbur was staring at his hand, running his thumb over the thin white scar that would probably fade in a day or two. You have healing powers he said in a strange voice. Uh, yep, I do, Tommy replied, shoving his hands in his pockets. But, uh, you don't... I'm not expecting you to, like, tell me what your powers are if you have any. Like, that's not why I healed you. I just knew I could take care of that cup pretty quickly, so... I did. Wilbur was silent for a moment. He glanced between his hand and Tommy's face, his brows furrowing with something unreadable. If Tommy didn't know any better, he'd almost say Wilbur seemed... sad? Like there was an emotion akin to guilt sitting heavily behind his thin glasses. Tommy. He started, his voice thick. He took a shaky breath, as if he was studying himself. I'm... Wilbur. Techno's voice, although flat and not raised whatsoever still boomed across the kitchen with the force of a shout. Tommy hadn't even noticed him appear in the doorway. It's getting late. Tommy's roommates are probably getting worried about him. The unreadable look on Wilbur's face flashed with anger, before quickly smoothing itself out as he turned towards Techno. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I am right. Techno agreed, staring Wilbur down. A few more seconds ticked by in suffocating silence, and Tommy wanted nothing more than to slink out of the kitchen unnoticed. But he knew he wouldn't be able to do that, so he stayed put, watching Wilbur and Techno have a silent conversation through facial expressions alone. Damn, did everyone besides him just know how to have silent conversations like that? Where's your backpack, Tommy? Tech and I will drive you home. Wilbur then asked none of the conflict from just a few moments earlier visible on his face. Tommy blinked at the sudden mood change. Oh, it's in the living room. I'll grab it now. A few minutes later, Tommy found himself settled into the back seat of the car with his backpack on his lap, while Techno and Wilbur both sat up front. The air was, once again, suffocating. It was as if a dark cloud was settled inside the car, ruining any chance at a normal conversation in favor of an awkward silence broken only by Wilbur occasionally asking him random stuff in an attempt to make the car ride just a bit less painful. Tommy had no clue what the fuck happened back in the house. It seemed as though Wilbur was about to tell him something, but Techno stopped him. Of course, this made Tommy really curious as to what he had been about to say, but he wasn't going to push the issue. Once again, they all had their secrets, and he wasn't going to pull a tubbo and demand Wilbur finish his sentence when Techno was out of earshot. Not that he would even get a chance like that any time soon. Techno was practically shooting daggers at Wilbur with his eyes every time he looked his way, and Tommy had a feeling that as soon as he was out of this car, the two of them were going to have a very loud conversation. 
and that was how the rest of the car ride went. Stony silence, broken only by Wilbur's occasional commentary. For most of the drive, Tommy kept his head against the window, the smooth glass cooling his forehead as he watched the streetlights pass by in soft blurs of orange and yellow. When they pulled up in front of his apartment building, Wilbur reminded Tommy that if he ever needed anything, he was just a text away. Once the car had pulled away, Tommy trudged into his apartment building and got a buzz from his phone while he waited for the elevator. Wilbur. Sorry about techno. He can be a real bitch sometimes when he's pissy. Tommy. Don't worry about it. I still had a really fun time today. Wilbur. Me too. Wilbur. See you at the cafe tomorrow? Tommy smiled at his phone as the elevator dinged to announce its arrival. Tommy. You bet. And with that, Tommy shoved his phone in his pocket and squeezed his eyes shut as the elevator began its shaky ascent. <laughs>